Information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. Welcome to the Worry-Free Retirement with Tony Walker. And now, the host of the Worry-Free Retirement, John Ramsey. And welcome to the Worry-Free Retirement, the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money. And with us in the studio today is the Senior Market Magazine's 2013 finalist for Advisor of the Year and the author and creator of the Worry-Free Retirement, financial advisor Tony Walker. And Tony, for those who, uh, who did not know that, uh, that is a really prestigious award that you, you are one of the, is there five finalists? Yeah, every year that magazine has five finalists and I was one of them. So uh, didn't, didn't get the top honor, but that's all right. It was a real honor just to be selected. So uh, really appreciated that. I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, he's in the house. We'll have some great advice for you, especially if you happen to be a saver. Tony, before we get into the meat of the program today, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your weekend, you and the family, how'd it go? Well, well, you know, I know you've been uh, married your wife quite a while. I've, I just celebrated 30 years with Susan. Wow. And uh, since this is a financial show, do you mind if I kind of share what we did over the weekend? Sure. Go okay. Right there. <laughs> you know, now, now don't get me wrong, Susan likes to be wine and dine, as they say. So I've spent some big bucks on her over the year, but we've got our little cabin in the woods. All right. And it was just she and I. We got to spend two nights up there this weekend. So it was a lot of fun. But we got this little fire pit thing out there. It was a beautiful night, quiet. And uh, we decided to make some s'mores. Wait a minute. Roasted marshmallows. Chocolate. Chocolate. Graham, graham crackers. crackers. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, man, it doesn't. And then we use these new kind of marshmallows. They're real big, chunky marshmallows. And man, those things would zap up real quick when we're all sugary. And I don't know, we're just sitting out there eating them. I thought, it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> but I thought, hey, folks, you know, it, things are a little tight, I know, financially. Some of you men out there kind of forget, you know, you're married for a while, you got to take care of these ladies. Sure. You want a cheap date, s'mores. There's, s'mores. A, there's a picture of our little uh, deck outside. There's our little fire pit. Whoop. And uh, that was taken the next day. That's where the uh, romantic interlude took place, John, right there. So I've got to tell you, I'm a little jealous. My <laughs> wife would actually like that. So I think, I think that's very romantic of you, s'mores. Five bucks. Five bucks. Now, and I would say some people may not have a fire pit overlooking the lake. That's okay. An old charcoal grill will do. Yep. I'm telling you, you get those s'mores going and it's lights out, baby. I like it. <laughs> I, like, I like your style. All right. As you know, this, this show is all about planning for your retirement. And Tony, I wanted to talk to you because the more I watch television, the more I read about the state of the economy, I, I have to admit, I, I'm, I'm a little worried. Uh, I've heard everything from you need a million to two million and you're never going to have enough and you've got to keep saving. And as I approach or get closer to retirement age, I, I am more than worried. You're in the trenches. That's, that's one of your MOs. That's what you're famous for. You actually know what people are saying, what's, talk, what's working out there, what's not working. What's your take on this? Well, my take is, John, is what you're just saying. I think some of the worry is being created by the financial world themselves. I mean, the financial world, um, I studied under a guy years ago named Bob Castellone, just a sharp guy, knew economics well, had a lot of great sayings. He always said something about the financial world I thought was really cool. He said, it's a lot like Dracula. You know, you think about Dracula. Dracula needed what? He needed blood to live. Without it, he would die. The financial world needs Money, my our money, money. <laughs> your money, <laughs> your money, and without it, they they die. Die. So what happens is, as people approach retirement, unlike my granddad who had a game plan to use and enjoy his money, which is what money is really all about, the financial world has set this precedent that you've got to have boatloads of money. You can only live off the interest. In other words, John, we'll take care of the principal. That's how they're really making the money. We'll throw you a bone and you figure out how to make it in the meantime. If we don't do as well as we thought, but we still get paid, that's tough luck. I mean, this is a game that's hard for consumers to win. So when you see these huge numbers being advertised, I say don't fall for it. I really don't. I want, I want to go through, again, the four rules of financial institutions. Let's kind of stay with this Dracula theme. And I think this is okay. going to help you folks. And this is not a knock against our financial world out there. It's any financial institution has to do this. So let's imagine, John, let's play a little game here. Let's imagine you and I started 
Ramsey and Walker Financial Institution. That would be hilarious, actually. Can you imagine that? <laughs> but anyway, so we don't have any money. So we're starting this new marketing organization or financial institution. The first thing we got to do is figure out how to get other people's money. Would you agree with that? Sure. We got to have money That's to operate business. on. All right. That's rule number one. An example, we'll, we'll pick on 401ks. The 401k was a great marketing tool back in 1978 because what happened was, before employers provided pensions, now all of a sudden, Joe Lunchbox shows up to work with no pension and there's this nice guy or lady in a suit or whatever, and they enroll you in a 401k. And you gotta save for retirement so they get your money through the 401k. You with me so far? Sure. Okay, let's go to rule number two. Let's kind of just follow, pick on the 401k. Now, John, we're starting our new enterprise here, Ramsey and Walker. Can we change that to Walker and Ramsey? That sounds better. I think you're the boss. Okay, yeah, Walker and Ramsey Financial. Wouldn't it be nice, John, rather than people sporadically coming in here, dropping off some deposits, wouldn't it be nice if we could get it on a regular basis? Like every paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's sure. right. So the financial world wants you to get it on a regular basis. Let's go to rule number three of the financial world. Okay, now this one is kind of, this gets a little stingy here. Wouldn't it be nice, John, if we had a strategy in place that when the people do deposited their money with it, we could hold on to it for as long as possible? Because the longer we hold on to it and use it, the more benefit we get from their money. You following this track? Sure. Same thing with a 401k. If you go to take your money out of a 401k, I, I met with somebody the other day who wanted to roll it out and they're over 59 and a half. Used to be if you're over 59 and a half, you could get it out even if you still work there. More and more of these planned documents are changing. You can't even get your money out of there. So the financial world has access to it for a long time. And then finally, and folks don't take this personally, wouldn't it be nice if we could just give them back as little as possible? All right, thank you. So tie this in. Now you got this kind of framework that the financial world operates on. Tie this in to the scare tactics that are out there saying, John, you don't have enough money. Keep it with us, keep working, keep saving. We're gonna show you this graphic in a minute. And maybe one day you'll have enough money so you can generate some interest to live on. Does that make sense? See, see how this message gets people so worried, but you gotta understand it's like the fox guard in the hen house here. That's what they want us to do. They don't want us to take the money from them because that's how they're compensated. The worry-free retirement is totally different. Tell us, how, does your pro how is your process different and how does it apply to savers? Because that, I have to admit, that's exactly what they're doing and it's working. It works very it's well. Right. It's working. Well, the, the philosophy behind the worry-free retirement is you only have so many years to live. We're gonna see in the three halves of life in a minute, but also it doesn't really work that w way in retirement. In other words, you won't have to have boatloads of money because as we'll see in just a second, we come back from break. Actually, as you get to a certain phase in life, I call it the, the second half of life, as you get older and older, what I've seen with my clients, John, they spend less and less money. So what happens is this message is skewed as we'll see when we come back from the break. The message is incorrect that you're hearing from the financial world. That's not really how the real world works when it comes to money and you won't need as much as you think and that's right up the uh, word free retirement's alley. That way we can go get some of our money as we need it and use and enjoy it rather than trying to live off the crumbs. This is the message I wanted to hear. There we go. This is the only show in the country that is dedicated to helping savers like you and I worry less about their money. All right, coming up, we have some more good information for you. The Worry for Youth Retirement is here. And my man, the retirement specialist, Tony Walker, is in the house. Stay with us. We'll be right back on the Worry for Retirement. How would you like to find a trusted advisor in your area who practices and preaches the same safe money solutions that I speak of on this program? Well, you can by simply logging on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and clicking on the Find an Advisor link. Once there, just fill out the confidential profile and submit it. This free service is available to savers who are serious about safeguarding their money. So what are you waiting for? Stop worrying and log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. And now it's time for Tony in the Trenches. You were talking a little bit about how as you've gotten older, uh, you're not spending as much money. Kind of elaborate on that for the audience a little bit. Well, I, 
I, I, I've always heard this, and now that I have got older, I just don't really have the desire to buy anything like I used to when I was a younger man. I mean, I used to think I had to have a new automobile all the time, and now I'm at the point in my life which I just don't care that much about new cars anymore. <laughs> you know, and and uh, everything I have, of course, is paid for, and I basically don't spend that much money anymore. I just don't have no reason to spend it. I don't take no vacations, and uh, you know, I, that's, that's primarily what I do. You know, I just don't, I just don't have no desire to buy a lot of stuff anymore. You know, that's kind of where I'm standing right now. What would you so, say to people out here that uh, people are getting this message that it's going to take more and more money to live on, which in one sense is true with inflation. Yeah. But what would you say to people who are maybe, let's say, in their early 60s and they're worried about the amount of money they're going to need in their 70s and 80s and 90s? What, what maybe word of encouragement could you give them? Well. I don't think they're going to need as much money as probably they think they're going to need because, I, as I said, I don't think they're going to be buying all this stuff that you buy when you are a younger person that you think you have to have. Then you find out later in life you don't really need all these things, you know. And also with your medical history, what would you tell people that are back in that age range, late 50s and 60s, about uh, enjoying your money while you can? I'm sure you've got a thought on that, haven't you? Well, yeah. Uh, I remember what a guy told me one time, uh, he said, son, don't ever be like me. He said, uh, live life as you go along, he said, because he had all this money and now he said he had plenty of money but he had no desire to do anything. He had gotten older and now he don't want to do anything but he can now well afford it. <laughs> so now he's at the point in his life he didn't want to do nothing now. And that's basically about all I can say on that. Wow, Tony, that's eye-opening. The, the financial world has not given me that same message. The good thing about being out in the trenches, and I keep that little video camera, this was a while back when I met this gentleman, is sometimes they'll share stories with me. I'll say, hey, do you mind if I get that on tape? No, go ahead. I mean, this is not scripted stuff here, John. This is real life stuff. So he reminds me a little of my granddad, too. I, I don't think any of that changes. My granddad, I think the key word was desire. That's another thing, too. As people get older, it's not that they don't enjoy money. or It's not that. It's just like you said, the desire to travel and buy new cars. You've been there, done that. Right. And, that, and I think that was very enlightening. And I it think, was. and that's the other reason, though, I would say people, uh, let, me, let me refer to this real quick. Uh, the book, The Worry-Free Retirement, folks, it's really, really enlightening stuff. I wrote this book after 9-11. And uh, basically, on about, there's the copy of the book. By the way, you can get this book on Amazon. You can go to Amazon.com, just Google Worry-Free Retirement. It's a great, great book, and I was saying stuff back, John, after 9-11, a lot of people are talking about now. Reassess your retirement. Uh, reinvent yourself. All this stuff was talked about in the book because I realized the message was not the correct message. But it talks about in the book about these three halves of life. I've gone over this before. If you don't mind, let me go over this again. If we've got our graphic ready, I want to talk about these three halves of life. This is the financial world. And, and I'll make it a little extra stuffy here, but there's the financial world, you know, the guy in the, the suit and tie is going to tell you what to do with your money. In the first half, which is what we all encourage, you got to save money. I'm all about that. But then you get to that middle portion where you're standing. That's what I call halftime. That's the portion the gentleman was talking about while you've got the money, got the health, maybe got the desire. I'm going to start using that word. That's when you should start maybe thinking about spending it. What's Wall Street or what's the financial world say? No, sorry, John, you haven't saved enough. Uh, you don't have enough money, save more with us. And then finally, in the last half of life, the second half, which is when you really ought to relax, since what that gentleman's saying, you don't need that much, what are they saying? Keep saving. Now let's go to the Worry for Retirement graphic and see if this doesn't look and feel and smell a lot different and see if this doesn't even that picture appeal to you. Again, first half of life, absolutely, when you're young, you should save. I always recommend at least 15% of your gross income, save it somewhere. I don't care where it is, gotta save it. Middle half, or halftime as I like to call it, you're getting in that 55, 60 year range, start enjoying your money while you can. And then finally, notice the blue column behind there, John, that's your savings. Even if it starts going down, see this, this makes savers really nervous. Even if it starts going down, that's okay. Relax, because I firmly believe, like the last gentleman said, you will spend less money as you get older and older. Okay, thank you. That's much more optimistic, Tony. I like that a lot better. And, and, and that's a big part of your process, is about being able to spend and enjoy your money. You earned it, and that's part of it. And a lot of times the financial world don't tell you that because they wanna keep your money. And, and a lot of what I, you know, I use the three-pronged approach of man, money, and God. I believe my approach is more biblical than the financial world. 
This money is just a commodity. We're not to worry about it. And if we set unrealistic expectations that are unfounded, ungrounded, certainly unbiblical, that's going to create worry. And in most cases, it's totally unnecessary, John. Totally unnecessary. By the way, we keep talking about savers. I don't want to run out of time here. I thought about something before we went on the show, and you were kind enough to agree. I don't know if we can get it into this segment. We may have to come back. But I wanted to walk through, uh, folks, we have something called the three personalities of money. I created this to help people figure out if you're a saver, investor, or speculator. And what might be fun, if you want to just go along with us right now, John's going to do this. It just takes about four or five minutes, is log on to threepersonalities.com and then click on the button that says take the test. So if you want to do that while you're watching the show in some of our markets, click on take the test. You'll have to scroll down and hit that agree button, the terms of agreement. Click on that. Okay, let's go, John. I'm going to read through these very okay. quickly. Tammy's inside. She's going to uh, click in the control room. So if given a choice between a high risk, high yield investment and a low risk yield investment, I would choose the latter. Would you tend to go high risk or low risk? Low risk. I'd strongly agree with strongly that. Strongly agree. So Tammy, click on strongly agree. Let's go to the next one. I would rather spend time doing things I enjoy, fishing, being with a family, as opposed to spending time trying to learn about things that appear too complex, like researching stocks. Would you rather spend time doing things like that, or would you rather research stocks? Again, I'd strongly agree. Strongly agree. Okay, keep going, Tammy. This is working out well, John. All right. And again, there's no right or wrong answers. You're just answering as you come up with it. If I had a windfall gain, an inheritance, etc., I'd rather put my money back into a venture I felt had upside potential rather than placing it in a safe option. So again, you get an inheritance. Would you rather put it somewhere safe or put it somewhere where you think you could make a lot of money on that money? I'd rather go safe. Safe. So what about agree there? Yes. Agree? Uh, yes. Next one, I'm an emotional buyer. I cannot afford some of the things I have, but I make purchases anyway. Jill may not want to hear this. <laughs> Here, at some point, and I just hope things will work out. Is that the way you kind of buy things? No, I, no, I disagree with so that. Disagree? Yeah. Click disagree. You hanging in there, Tammy? All right. I am more likely to buy a stock rather than a guaranteed investment or savings product, an option rather than a stock. Would you rather buy something safe or would you rather buy something like a stock? I'd, I'd rather go safe. Okay, so actually that's disagree then. Mm -hmm. These are kind of tricky and we did this on purpose. You go to next so that people really are reading these and they just don't fly through them. Okay, if, uh, excuse me. Uh, Tammy, you keep going to the next one. I've got a, uh, let's go here real quick. I should have been checking as well. We're doing this on our laptop in here, folks, and I didn't check. See, it won't let you do that, John, unless you check something. It said you hadn't answered the last five. There we go. I can accept losses more easily than others can. Do you like going through losses? I, I disagree. I don't like that. No. Disagree. Okay. I'm a thrill seeker. <laughs> Disagree. <laughs> okay. You ever roast marshmallows? That's kind of I do thrilling. like doing that. Okay. That's a thrill for me. All right. I enjoy analyzing buying decisions based on research. Do you like researching things before you go out and buy a washer and dryer? Or you just go out there and get one? I, I'm not a big research guy. I disagree. Yeah. I like guarantees. I do like guarantees. Okay. Agree on that. <laughs> yes, I do. I have no problem taking advantage of the situation at hand. Uh, no, I disagree. Okay. Disagree. I will take a chance once I have done my homework. Uh, agree. Okay, agree. No problem. By the way, a gentleman took this the other day, and he had a variable annuity, and uh, he said, well, I took your uh, uh, course online, and I, it said I was an investor, and I said, that actually makes sense, because investors like variable annuities. Savers like fixed annuities. Kind of cool. I want financial products that are very predictable. I agree. Okay. I'm an impulse buyer. I uh, disagree. All right. Tammy saying, hustle up. When challenged, I do not know the real details of the true impact of current events on financial markets. I, I'd agree with that. Okay. The expression, no risk, no reward, definitely fits me. No, I disagree. Disagree. Very good. A penny saved is a penny earned. Agree. Agree. Oh, we're going great here. We're almost done here. 15 and 16. I left out again. Uh, disagree. Agree. Here we go. Have you got that in there, Tammy? Have you she's, already logged it up? Okay, you might want to put in, uh, just put John, and uh, there you go. Can you type that in real quick? John Ramsey, what about your email? You okay putting that up there? Sure, we'll get it, it on real there. quick. Throw it on there. <clears throat> and let's watch it pop up. And again, folks, take this at home. This gives you a chance to do it. It's calculating, scroll to the top. Congratulations, there you go. Thanks, Tammy. That's cool, isn't it? That's very cool. You're predominantly a saver. 
So folks, when you take this, I use psychologists at the Western Kentucky University here in Bowling, in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is scientific. It's helping you gauge what your predominant personality is so then you can purchase products that fit your personality. And we are the only show that is dedicated to helping savers worry less about their money. We'll be right back on the Worry-Free Retirement. For nearly 30 years, I've made it my life's work to help savers worry less about money. And now I invite you to personally contact me to discuss your situation to see if I can help you. It's very easy. You just log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and click on the Meet with Tony link. Or if you like, you can attend one of my free financial workshops. As always, there's never any cost or obligation to meet and discuss your situation in private. So what are you waiting for? Log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. And now it's time for Tony in the Trenches. Hey, so, you know, you've been retired about three years now, and you were just sharing with me before we went on camera here. What has been the biggest surprise about being retired? Well, I have more money now than I was when I was working because uh, I guess it's expensive to work, and, you know, you're always paying in your 401K, and you always have to have money to go to work. but. I have all the funds I need now, and I never did, when I first got laid off from work and retired early, I thought that I would run out of money, you know, but it's been pretty good. I have no complaints. So when people uh, see the TV ads or whatever that you need millions of dollars, what would be your response to that? You don't need millions of dollars, you know. If you get, you know, you get a little Social Security check and you've got a little money saved and you put it to good use, give somebody good to take care of it, that uh, you don't need it. I've, I have not wanted for anything in the last past three years that I've been laid off from work. And this so, is even after you said you have a couple of family members that you're helping that have yeah, moved into my, your house. my daughter and grandson live with me, and uh, of course I help a lot for my grandson. You know, as a, my only grandson, he can't want for anything, you know. So I spoil him rotten. <laughs> you know, that's the message I want to hear, but it's not the message I'm hearing from the financial world. I love that. Very optimistic there. It makes me feel good about things. Tony, that's what the worry-free retirement is all about. I I'm curious, though, if someone goes on your website and they want a, a like-minded in individual like yourself, they want a, a financial advisor, what, what kind of questions should they ask? What, what should they expect from a retirement specialist? Yeah, first of all, if you are outside the Kentucky, Indiana area, of course, I service people that have come into the website if you're in Kentucky watching the show, but if you're outside that viewing area, you're in one of our other markets, you can scroll down to the Find an Advisor tab. And these folks around the country are trained and they're like-minded in trying to help savers worry less about money. Uh, now, so you just click on that Find an Advisor and someone will get in touch with you. There's no cost or obligation to, by the way, John, to have someone visit with you about your situation. Now back to what should a saver expect when meeting mm -hmm. with an advisor. See that's another thing too. Over the years people have said, well I don't even know what to ask an advisor. The advisor takes control of the meeting. Poor old savers are usually, they start bombarding with products. Let's take a look at some of the things you should expect. Okay, a retirement specialist should provide an assessment on how to lower taxes, lower fees, attempt to lower insurance premiums and lower interest costs. If you're a saver and you're meeting with an advisor and they're not even bringing this up, you probably have someone that deals more with investors. You probably need a second opinion. Let's go to the next thing you should be talking about when you're meeting with an advisor. They should have some sort of software that can analyze when to take Social Security and strategies involving Social Security. So let's say you're getting ready to retire. There's a lot of software out there, we have it as well, that can help you think about whether you should take Social Security now or delay it. Let's see what else we've got on there. I've got several of these, John. There's a whole list. And then finally, let's just go with this. This is the last one. What type of life insurance, if any, should be secured or should there be any life insurance that should be kept? So those are the main things that, there's other things that could come up, but a saver should be preoccupied with those items. And whether you know if you've got an advisor that works with savers or not, if they're not willing to talk about this or they, they blow over it and they just want to get to the investments, they're probably working with investors. You, you definitely want to get a second opinion. And again, people can go to our website and find that individual that has that kind of training that can give them a second opinion at no cost or obligation. And again, that's TonyWalkerFinancial.com. 
All right, Mr. Walker, we're going to put your work here on the Elmo, yeah, aren't we? Real quick, because we always talk about annuities, folks, and there's a lot of things out there right now that are confusing people. First of all, let me take you to uh, my website, because a lot of people know that I do a lot of work with fixed annuities. Uh, if you want to take a, a look at our fixed annuities section of the website, you just go up to Annuities 101, and there's actually a free ebook I wrote absolutely free about the misconceptions of annuities. So if, it, if I were you, I would click on that button. I would then scroll down after you enter that page, and as you scroll down, you'll see a little uh, white icon down to the left, lower section of the left. There's some little bird eggs there, <laughs> and that's the misconceptions of annuities. So I would download that book. Now, real quickly, here's what I was going to say on our Elmo here. We will help you understand the difference between a payout and an income rider. This is real important. Let's show this real quick. This is an ad I recently got that shows a 5.5% rate of return. This is a payout rate, folks. And if you're getting ready to jump on something this high, make sure you understand this is an immediate annuity. We'll help you with the four types of annuities. They're in that booklet. So again, if you're in the market for an annuity or want to understand annuities better, download the free e-booklet. Go to our website and find an advisor that is trained in this area to help you so you won't make a mistake and purchase the wrong kind of annuity. All right, lots of information about annuities. TonyWalkerFinancial.com, the only show dedicated to helping savers worry less about their money. And I don't know about you, I like worrying less. We'll be right back on the Worry-Free Retirement. How would you like to find a trusted advisor in your area who practices and preaches the same safe money solutions that I speak of on this program? Well, you can by simply logging on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and clicking on the Find an Advisor link. Once there, just fill out the confidential profile and submit it. This free service is available to savers who are serious about safeguarding their money. So what are you waiting for? Stop worrying and log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Megan, you're a tramp. Ryan Fitch told me you guys made out. Everybody knows. He says you're the most desperate girl he knows, besides your mom. How many boyfriends does she have anyway? Lots. That zit is huge. Zit face. Ugly. Welcome back. TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Now, the first 10 people who go there to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and click Contact Tony. Leave your name, leave your address, and we'll give you a free copy of the book, Three Personalities of Money. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, we're the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about their money. Tony Walker, thank you. See you next week. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you once again. You've been watching the Worry-Free Retirement with financial advisor, Tony Walker. To ask Tony a question or to find an advisor in your area, log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com.